Well, folks, we're in the posh seats today. Padded seats. Padded nice. seats, yeah. We're doing hospitality today, so it's a little bit different. We're doing hospitality. We're with, um, with guests of Sean's Stand Up JSM Developments. One parking space, so whoever is else is. Okay. Alright, okay. Right. Well, good job we're here first, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> alright, Sean, how are you doing? Yes. I'm alright, mate. Alright, young man? Yeah, you. You're on. Alright. Hey, right. Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Hi, I'm Jane. Sean. Sean. George. Ben. Ben. He's our grandson. We're doing the Benny Normal Pulse challenge a week on Monday we are setting off driving all the way to Benidorm raising money for Brian House Hospice hoping to raise a lot of money along the way and the challenge is um, basically you're driving a around 500 pound car and you've got to make it to Benidorm that's all the right. challenge all right so hopefully we're going to get a lot of support along the way and raise a lot of money for a great charity who's done the signs for you uh, link sign and graphics of Blackpool Luckily, did it for um, nothing due well to the charity. So right. massive thanks to them. Good, thank you. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, just want to ask you a couple of things. Uh, what do you remember about, obviously, the wonder goal that you scored here against Wolves? Yeah, a couple, of, bit, couple of bits, really. Obviously, it was uh, they, were, they were all important games. I'd won a couple of early headers against the lad, actually. I played, he'd come to Ipswich, uh, Kevin Foley, and he said the first couple of headers, I, I murdered him. And uh, so he let, that, he let me have this one. So I chested it, sat up lovely, whacked it, and see it flew in the top corner. Um, as, as well, with that story, I spoke to Mick McCarthy after he was obviously the Wolves manager. Yeah. And I think he said that Jez Moxie had had a go at him after the game, saying that Hanneman should have saved it. And, and Mick had said that it needed two goalies to save that. So, yeah, yeah it, was, I was, it, it was a wonder strike. Yeah, I was proud of that one. You saved it. it for the Prince as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I got man of the match at game and come to the top of the stairs. I didn't know if to bow, curtsy or whatever, and he just said it will live long in his memory, so that was a great moment for yeah, me as well. absolutely. What was it like playing with uh, Ian Holloway under Holloway? Fantastic. Just uh, one of my favourite managers to play under. Just sort of gave us that licence to be a bit of a free spirit. Yeah. Um, he really bought into the ethos of the club and he, he made the lads do the same as well. So, yeah, just not to be have that much pressure on us. I remember we, we'd have a few good hidings away at certain places. It just changed the mentality straight away on a Monday morning, concentrating on the next week in, in front of you, which yeah. is really good because sometimes football clubs can be tough places after a big loss at the weekend. And yeah, for him to do that was great for the lads and it was a positive sort of environment throughout that yeah. week. That's amazing. What was your favourite goal that you scored? Would it be in Liverpool? Or? Yeah, probably at Anfield, being honest. Yeah. Obviously, getting that winner. Um, and I think I remember at the time, we, we, the papers had said that we'd probably get 10 points throughout the season and that took us to the 10 point barrier so early in September, so Ollie was, was buzzing with that and I was had a lot of family there, it was close to my birthday as well, so yeah, that was probably my favourite one. And what do you think of Blackpool when you came? Did you enjoy, did you enjoy it here? Obviously, you know, we hear so many stories about washing your kit and all <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit nuts. I, I turned up and obviously there was a little porter cabin I walked into and my suit, I'm a bit worried about my suit getting dirty to be honest, but uh, <laughs> no, but it was great. Uh, straight the way I knew, I, I walked in and I sat next to David Vaughan actually because I knew him from crew. And all I could hear was someone screaming. I was like, who's that? He said, that's the gaffer. He's just a, it's a nutcase. So <laughs> I felt right at home straight away. My sort of place, my sort of environment. And uh, yeah, literally got thrown in the deep end, started on that Saturday and scored on my debut against Fulham. So I think sometimes you get your respect on the pitch and I was able to do that quite quickly. Um, 
the night before was interesting. They put me in the Hilton. There was a couple of Hindus running up and down my corridor, <laughs> right. which uh, yeah. I didn't get involved in because obviously making the Premier League debut. But uh, yeah, it was a bit of an eye opener and I enjoyed it. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks a lot for you know. Nice to meet you today, and uh, you know we did so love you while you were here. So you know, you're, you're well, you're fondly remembered. Glad right? to be invited back. Yeah, great. It's great okay. to see you. You're looking great as well. Tom, what's your name? Sebastian. Sebastian, that's a great name. Uh, now, are you confident of Blackpool going to win today? Yeah. Who's your favourite player? Probably Jerry Eight. Jerry Eight. And what do you reckon the score's going to be? Six one. Six one. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who watched me back in the day, come past the training ground, remember the port cabin really well, to be honest. <laughs> Obviously, I was, I was out in the cold at Derby, which found it really, really interesting then. To come and play in the Premier League was uh, a bit of an eye opener, but uh, yeah, it was a massive game. I was made aware of the history. Obviously, because the ground weren't quite finished, I played the first few games away, so luckily enough to get the nod that first day was fantastic, and to get the goal and I think we'd speak to Ollie quite a bit about it. Even though we scored some really great goals that year, I think that was a team goal that he's really proud of and something we put together in training. So, yeah, maybe please. Man. People all obviously ask me now, you can reflect on it about managers and, and playing for Ollie. Just a free spirit, no, no pressure. Um, we had a couple of hidings at certain grounds away from home, and on a Monday morning, it, it can be quite daunting to come in. Lads don't really want to talk to each other. And he'd just talk about how many chickens he'd lost on his farm that, that, that weekend. So, literally, the football's out the window, I'd concentrate back on the game. And then the odd occasion we'd turn up, and if you know where the training ground is, there was a greasy spoon just over the road. Don't worry, get changed, lads. We're going for a breakfast and a game of poker on the promenade. So, I thought I'll fit, fit in really well here. So, yeah, just a, a great year, and just really unfortunate and couldn't continue the journey because. Obviously, that last day of the season was, was devastating for us all, but uh, yeah, I still speak to a lot of the lads and, and got a close knit with the club still. So. Yeah, there's obviously, like I say, a tight knit group. Let's just talk through some of your teammates then. So, who were, kind of, who were your best pals really in the club that you kind of built that camaraderie, that team spirit with? Uh, I say born he was, but he do not speak, you know, he's quite <laughs> quiet. He was an unsung hero, I think you'll all agree. Obviously, Charlie did the beautiful stuff, but Vaughan got the ball back for him. Um, Still in close contact with Ever. Yeah, you know, but he asked me for a few player references now. He's doing really well at Bolton, so fair play. Um, Erd's actually signed for Burton when I was there, and he, he lived at my house for quite a bit. And, uh, my wife weren't too pleased about that. <laughs> I spoke to him more than I spoke to her for three months. So. And uh, I'm trying to think what else. You got DJ Campbell. I still speak to DJ. He's, he's a bit of a. He's in London now doing his bits and bobs, so uh, <laughs> I'll leave the rest of the imagination. <laughs> Gillo, goalkeeper. Yeah, he did fantastic and still speak to him when we play against him. He's still a ball, he was a ball with ever, I know that. So yeah, just we had a great bunch and looking at some of those um, the quiz photos, some of the yeah, I've not had no input into that by the way. Yeah, we had a great bunch and uh, like I say, we took it most of the time. Rob Edwards as well, doing fantastic at ball screen. You talk about some of them uh, faces on there. There were some unfamiliar kind of players at Ollie Science. So how did that mix in with that, like you say, that tight knit group? Because there were some some foreign players that came in. So any, any good anecdotes or little stories you can recall on that side? Yeah, I, I, I said about that. I just spoke to a chap on my table that Blackpool have got this way of doing really well up to Christmas and then sort of nose diving. I think if you look at our points, we turn up to Christmas, we were on on key to stay off. And then Ollie's gone to watch Barcelona train. We, we didn't play many games in December, if you remember. The pitch had the tent on, but the tight boys didn't turn the heaters on. So uh, <laughs> December was quite good for me and friends. We had a few nights out, we didn't play any games. So, but he went to Barcelona, and we the next game back we changed our whole. If you remember, we were quite dynamic. We used to do lots of diags and get the ball high up the pitch. He came back and made us pass out on the back. So the first game back we played Fulham away. We had 500 passes and lost 3 now, so that was completely different to what we and, and we really suffered from Christmas onwards. And I'll blame most of the players on that shift. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put that together on that basis, obviously. Um, just finally, you, you know, obviously you're here today. You played for Derby as well. Just on Derby's plight, you got some 
some thoughts on that, you're from that area? Yeah, I think I've had a lot of reporters asking me to sort of, not bad mark them, but the, the current situation, the current players. Administration's tough wherever you are. I, I, I went through it in Portsmouth, I think that's why I can relate to it. The, those Derby players deserve a lot of credit for, for sticking with it. it it's tough times, we're not getting paid. I know it's all relative. They get paid a lot of money, but they still play big balls and stuff, and, and they've stuck at it. And, and fair play to me. This, we don't want to see Derby County go down. They're not, they're not a championship club. They should be in the Premier League, really, with the size of the place. Um, so I've got no, nothing bad to say about them. We all have to cut a cloth accordingly, shall we say? And, and they've suffered for that. And they've paid the price, and hopefully they get back up back into championship one day. Uh, it's just been an amazing day, hasn't it? So far? Yeah, it's been lovely. It's been very, it's very different. But, uh... We, um, we, we've, we've seen the team news. Jane was very disappointed that Bola is not going to get cried. a chance to say goodbye to us. Yeah, if he does go and we don't see him again, it's just it's just really sad because he's just, yeah, I don't know, he might be injured, he might have signed somebody else, I don't know, but it's just very sad that I'm never going to see Josh Bowler player again, play again. He never got a, ta he never got a chance to say ta-ra, unless they bring him on at half-time. Well, you never know, he might resign, so maybe we'll no, you never know. guess um, he'll set over nothing. The big news as well is Marvin Tessa's not in defence, which to me is a little bit of a worry. He'd be fleeing with all that they managed to stay up. <laughs> so, uh, which is good for Blackpool, you know, it's good for the, the town and the businesses and the restaurants yeah, and the bars. Course, you know, the higher Fleetwood are, the better it is for Blackpool, really. Yeah, we're going to go back in. Before we go back in, we've just got to mention our match sponsor, Andy Eagles of Postal Day Systems, for the best UK deals on franking machines, postal discounts and many campaigns. Call him on 07809 556 422 or visit his website www.postalanddata.systems. So, hope it's a great game. Every season, I think we did that sofa talk earlier in the season, and you said for the last five years he stepped up the league consecutively the last five seasons. He must be inside delighted with yourself and how you've done. Yeah, definitely. I still can't believe it sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it's been good. Thoughts on the fan base and how they got behind the team? The fans have been brilliant, literally every home game, every away game, singing from the start to the end. It's, yeah, it's been brilliant. It's helped us a lot. It's my birthday today. It's my birthday, yeah. 53 oh. years young. 53 years young. I know, young. yeah. Today? I think it'll be a draw today. I think it'll be a high scoring draw. 3-3. 3 3, three, three. three, three. I think it's going to be end to end, playing with freedom. But we can't let Derby win, we can't let 4,000 Derby fans take over today. We need to outsing them and outplay them, so I hope I'm wrong with 3 3. All right, I'm, I'm going to go one each today. I think it's going to be quite tight. I think the team's in turmoil, just a bit like Birmingham. Uh, so I'm going to go for 2 1 today. Yeah, 2 1. 2 1. <laughs>
Come on, he'll blow. That's it. Half time. Um, immediate thought is that penalty. Um, you know, you, may, you could have just rolled it to the keeper and he would have saved it. It should have been, you know, you know, in Derby, knowing they're strong, physical. It should have been top in, done with it. It was just a little bit too relaxed. It was exactly the way that Gary Reed really always takes a penalty, wasn't it? So the yeah. keeper's been watching him. He, yeah, he goes, and they know he's our penalty taker. I mean, they might have expected that Keogh maybe would have taken it today just because of that, that pain. But yeah. Yeah. first half-wise, though, we do lack against their physicality. And, um, yeah, they're very, like, strong. They're fast. They're quick on their decisions. We're a little slower. We have to think about where we're passing. Right. We're struggling against that. Um, hopefully, a second half, we'll come back. Um, redeem that penalty, but I think they're playing above themselves because of this massive support we've got here today. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. Of the minute. Can we win it? I want to say yes. You're a second half team. You always tell us. I do. Do you know what? And I do believe it because we have done it many times. But do you know what? I'm going to back us. I have last game of the season, Bloomfield Road. We've got the lack of honour to come up. I'm going to back us. I feel like I've probably get my boots on do a better job than some of them. <laughs> no, uh, it's competitive, but I just said to a couple of lads I'm with, this stage of the season, players don't want to get injured. You can see that in them. They're not, they're not on holiday already, but there's an element of that. But I think Blackpool have done OK. A couple of chances. Charlie Kirk's had a chance there right then. If he made a good contact, he would have, could have made it count. Second half would be better, I'm sure. A few more chances, but there's optimism around the, the room and... I feel like Blackpool come good second half. <laughs> Miss penalty. Yeah, I think that's... Kel Roos hasn't played a lot of games. He'd have done his homework. One of the fans has just said that Medina always goes that side, so maybe he should have changed it up or we'll give it Keo like the fans are asking for. Yeah, they should have done that. Back out for the second half.
15, 15,298. Community Chair. 
champion, presented by Ash Rackets, the CEO of the Trust, and the winner is Drew and Gabriel. came in their thousands, they've cheered them on, they've been good humoured, they've, they've just been amazing and for oh, them Derby, really... Derby fans have been the best fans we've had here yeah, all season, so I know I said that against Birmingham but these are even better. It doesn't keep them up but at the end of the day you know it's... It, at least they got to cheer something on a, you know, fact, and they came in the numbers didn't they? So and we've got to say goodbye to Josh because he did come out to get us in the world. So... Thanks for watching us, uh, we've got one more game to go, uh, hopefully we can beat Peterborough and the Novels Loom against Middlesbrough. But, and the players just coming round now for, round of, uh, for a lack of honour, so we'll, we'll film them and turn the camera around.
Services. It's still a celebration, we've been so well. Time until Derby turned up, until then, they party over. It all, they? they deserved it, really. You know, for the fans. They did deserve it, but we enjoyed ourselves, though, didn't we? Yeah. And, oh, and at, Wem at Wembley, we got promoted, and today we've just we, 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 we've done it justice, Lee. Right, what's your name? Lincoln. Lincoln, what do you think? It's a season, the game. Good season. Yeah. Well, it's a good season. Well, disappointing game. Disappointing at the end. I was very unlucky today, but they're a good team, and you know, hope for next year they're back in the championship. But lots to improve and bring on next season. Yeah. On the pill. What do you think? I think it's been a good season. A very disappointing game, really. I just thought we made goal scoring once again, look hard, and they just made. Yeah, it we controlled it for long spells, didn't we? We did, and we just, you know, the goal. We, we missed a penalty. Goal they pulled the one to say yeah. off, and we paid the price. Didn't well, we? Great, and they they battled on and kept kept at it. And deserved yeah. what they got, really, in the end. Yeah, so. they, did, they did, and the fans were fantastic, weren't they? Onwards and upwards. Did you enjoy the game? Yeah. Jerry, Jerry yeah. Yates's shirt. Jerry Yates's and you got Jerry Yates's shirt, did you? Yeah. In it. Wow. What's your name? William. Okay. Oh, it's fantastic. That is fishy as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's got his eye on that. <laughs> really, see you later. Good to see you, Lee. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please give the video a like and also comment down below as well. That really helps. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, there is a little button there that you can click. Also, if you enjoy these match day vlogs, there is a full playlist of match day vlogs up there. And also, if you haven't yet checked out one of our football tourist guide, then there will be a football tourist guide there for you to watch.